today is from Exodus chapter 34, verse 1 to 10. I'll read it for everybody. The Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets you two broke. Be ready in the morning, and then come up, to, uh, come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up Mount Sinai early in the morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for their sin, for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and whispered, uh, worshipped, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, he said, then let the Lord go with us, although this is stiff-necked people. For, forgive our wickedness and our sin, and take us your inheritance. Then the Lord said, I am making covenant with you. Before all, people, before, before all your people, will, I will do wonder, never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the, the the Lord will do for you. Amen. All right. So in today's scripture, we see God reveals his declaration to the Israelites. Well, after, math, after all those like golden calf incident, uh, God presents himself not with wrath, but rather with a declaration of his character that would echo through the ages. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Well, this passage takes us into an understanding of God and challenges us to reflect his nature in our lives. In, this, in today's scripture, amidst the rock terrain of Sinai, God chose to reveal his character that forever alters our understanding of him. That God is not just uh, one who hates the injustice, but also able to forgive and show compassion to us. This is just more than the historical footnote. It is heartbeat of God's relationship with humanity. And there, he articulates himself like words with the compassion, grace, patience, love, and faithfulness, which we have to follow too as God's children. First, the God's compassion and grace are a foundation to his character. Compassion carries the sense of deep love and sympathy, stirred by the suffering or misfortune of another. Grace, similarly, is an unmerited favor of God towards humanity. The prophet Micah, uh, reflecting on God's character in Micah chapter 7, verse 18, who is God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay anger forever, but delight to show mercy. Here, Micah celebrates God's uniqueness in his reading, uh, readiness to forgive and extend mercy, showcasing his uh, compassionate and gracious nature. Compared to the other religions they had in the time period, for example, um, they were usually to, to be forgiven. Well, you have, kind of have to be sacrificed yourself or your children. 
human sacrifice was not uncommon and even more well you have to kill yourself from time to time well to be forgiven in front of their gods so God, the, God, what God provides here what our God provides is very shocking to them how could we be forgiven by just because, by because only because he loves us it shows that God is different than the word points of view that the world presents to us. Though he punishes the evils, though he hates evils, there is always room for us to be forgiven and accept his grace. Next is patient or being slow to anger. It's another defining attribute of God's character. The quality reflects uh, God's long suffering nature his willingness to bear with us despite our shortcomings and failures. He knows that we are weak, we are fragile, and he knows that we are not perfect too, which means we sometimes make mistakes, sometimes fall into the temptation of this world, and sometimes betray God's uh, expectation, and he knows it. However, he will wait for us to come back to him, confess the sin, and be forgiven. His, this patience of God is further highlighted in, uh, by the Apostles Peter, Peter, who reminds us in chapter two, uh, uh, Second Peter, verse, uh, chapter three, verse nine, "The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you." not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone come to repentance. This patience underscores God's desire for all to come to, to a saving knowledge of Him, willing to wait and endure until we all come back to Him. The love and faithfulness are perhaps well, most well-known characteristic of God, God's love is not passive or conditional. It is active, pursuing, and boundless. The Apostle John encapsulates this love, stating in 1 John chapter, verse four, chapter 4, verse 9, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his, his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. It's not like God only saved those people who believed in Him. He forgave the sin of all humanity by sacrificing Himself on the cross. He, uh, he, even though we were shortcoming of His grace and love, God's faithfulness eventually achieved what He promised. Likewise, his commandment that stands the test of time and circumstances. The psalmist declares in Psalm chapter 36, verse 5, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. So, it, it, this verse portrays the love and faithfulness that are vast, unwavering, and infinite. The implica implication invites us to truly deeply in God who cares us with compassion, extends grace freely, wait patiently for us to return to him, and loves us unconditionally, and remains faithful through, through all seasons of life. This knowledge calls us to mirror these attributes in our, in our, in our relationships and interactions, challenging us to embody the compassion, grace, patience, love, and faithfulness of God in the world we are living in. It is not easy, of course, but we're going to try. Let this profound revelation of God's nature inspire us to draw closer to Him, to know Him more deeply, and reflect His character, so we can be more like Jesus Christ as the followers of Christ. And also, 
not only this chapter 34 reveals God's character, but also re- he also renews his covenant with Israel. This moment is not just a reaffirmation of legal agreement. It is declaration of God's unwavering commitment to his people, a promise that extends from the pages of Exodus into the heart of the new covenant through Jesus Christ. In renewing the covenant with the Israelites, God demonstrates his unconditional love and faithfulness. Despite their failures, most notably the incident with the golden calf, God chose to renew his promise to his people. This act is a testament to God's grace and its fundamental aspect of his character. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 echoes this enduring love with God declaring, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Then the renewal of this covenant in Exodus prefigures the establishment of a new covenant through Jesus Christ, which is central to our faith, Christian faith. This new covenant fulfills and transcends the old offering, a relationship with God that is based on forgiveness and inner transformation. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10, quoting Jeremiah, this is, covenant, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So this verse highlights the new covenant, emphasizing God's desire to dwell within his people, guiding them from the inside out. Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, he says, And surely I am with you always, to the very end of age. And this assures of the continuous presence and guidance promised in the renewed covenant. That this promise signifies that through every trial and triumph that we experience, God's guiding hand and comforting presence are assured to his followers. The renewal, renewal of the covenant in Exodus and its ultimate fulfillment in Christ assures us that we are never forsaken, never alone, and always under watchful care and guidance of loving God. And responding to this renewed covenant involves more than just acknowledgement of it. It requires a heart-transforming acceptance of God's grace through Christ Jesus and commitment to life in accordance with His will. As 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 reminds us, we love because He first loved us. Our love for God and love for others is response to the overwhelming love that God has shown us. A love that is willing to renew a broken covenant and fulfill it through the sacrifice of His Son. It calls us to live in the assurance of God's unfailing love and faithfulness, to embody His law of love and righteousness, not as just ex- external imposition, but as the expression of our inner being, transformed by His grace. It challenges us to be people of the covenant, marked by the commandment of God and to the principle of His kingdom, showing the world reality of God's love and through our lives. The covenant God renews with His people in Exodus chapter 34 and its ultimate fulfillment in the new covenant through Jesus Christ is well called a way, called to a way of life that reflects God's character. So I hope we don't forget about that, that we are the citizens of the kingdom of God, and that we have to live for love, grace, justice, and fidelity in our daily lives. Thus, engaging deeply with scripture is foundational to living out the covenant. Through the Bible, God reveals his character, his will, 
his plan for salvation. Psalm chapter 119, verse 105 declares, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. So, to put ourselves in God's word, we have to allow his truth to guide our decisions, our actions, our interactions, ensuring that our lives are aligned with his covenant promised by, promised by him and his commands. Also, reading scripture, more than the reading scripture, prayer is also a lifeline to God. A means through, a means through which we communicate with our creator expressing our gratitude, confess our sins, and seek our guidance. Paul encourages believers in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Through prayer, we maintain an ongoing relationship with God, allowing His Spirit to shape us, more into the image of Christ and empower us to live out the covenant that Jesus Christ gave to us. And also, this covenant call is not only a personal relationship with God, but also a life within a community of believers. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25 urges us, and let us consider how we may spur one another Unto, untoward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting, it, meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. As part of the faithful community, we grow together, support each other, and we should work collectively to manifest God's kingdom's principle in the world around us. Jesus' ministry was marked by act of service. He didn't just speech, but he actually went out and act for it, which reflects the heart of the covenant through compassion and care for the others. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, Jesus explains, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Following Jesus' example, living out the covenant involves serving those in needs, advocating for justice, and being agent of God's grace in this broken world. And as a Christian, we are ambassadors of God's love, representing his kingdom and sharing the message of his grace with this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as through God, God we are, we're making his appeal through us. Thus, our lives should bear witness to a transform, transformative power of the covenant, inviting others to experience the love and redemption found in Christ. Reflecting God's attributes in our life is an ongoing journey of transformation that impacts how we view our lives. interacting with each other and engaging with the world. And as we consider how we embody compassion, graciousness, faithfulness, and love, let us remember that it is through, uh, through our daily choices and actions that God's character, and that God's character is most vividly displayed to the others. Thus, let us form deeper relationship with God Challenging us, in, challenging us to embody his characteristics in our life. And let us commit ourselves to God's kingdom that is to come. And let us make difference in this world by living in God's word. Let us pray. Lord, you are loving, you are graceful, and you are patient, and yet you are forgiving. 
Lord, as humans, we are so often controlled by our emotions. We are controlled by the ration, uh, rational reasons of this world. And Lord, we often forget to act based on the faith. Lord, help us not to forget your teachings and your words. Help us to form deeper relationship with you, Lord, so we may live as your kingdom's citizens in this world, be ambassador of your words, and Lord, be living as a Christian, the followers of Christ in this world, so we can show this world who you are, your love and grace, so more may come back to you, repent to you, and be saved from the sin. Lord, we may small in number, we may be weak and prone to the temptations of this world, but Lord, when you are with us, our, our humanity, human failures, human shortcomings can be forgiven and overcome. So we can be something more greater than what we expected to see in this world. So Lord, please be with us, use us, lift us up for your kingdom. And Lord, help us to be the salt and lighthouse in this time. Lord, please use us to help the others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.